Shelter insurance has covered a lot of miles and a lot of cars and drivers since 1946. We like knowing we have you covered, so you can just sit back and enjoy the ride. Shelter insurance. We're your shield. We're your shelter. As shelter agent Mark Manning about shelter's competitive insurance rates. Bank of England Mortgage Company in the Village Mall, Kenny Thaxton brings you Let's Talk Sports with Bud Black. Hello again, everybody. I'm David Black. And around the sports world, we like to uh, visit with you about a few things that, uh, that are going on. We filmed early in March, and March Madness uh, underway. What a great time of year it is for college basketball. It's one of the greatest events over the course of a couple of week period. Uh, NCAA basketball and getting to the Final Four and winning that championship. But it's just a tremendous time for college athletic campuses. They get after it during March Madness. It is an exciting time of year. If you're watching it the first of the March, make sure you tune in to watch some of that. Uh, uh, around here locally, uh, basketball, the Tuckerman Bulldogs had a great, great run. Uh, got eliminated in the state tournament, but once again, what a great, great year those guys had. They continue to get better year in, year out at Tuckerman. Baseball is on the cusp here in Newport. The Greyhounds, the Lady Greyhounds, the Bulldogs, the uh, Lady Bulldogs, all doing real well. want to say a shout out to uh, Caitlin Platt, former uh, Tuckerman Bulldog, who is now playing at Lyon College. And folks, let me tell you what, I knew Caitlin was going to be a great pitcher when she was a little kid. She has just gotten better and better and better. And she is one of the lead pitchers on the team for the Lion Scots. If you get an opportunity, check them out on the website. See when, uh, see when they play at home. Get over to Basel. Take the short trip over there and watch that young lady pitch. Because let me tell you what, she is simply phenomenal. She was a tremendous in high school, like a four-time, a four-year All-State uh, pitcher. She is the real deal. She can sling that round ball, and she can sling it very, very hard, and she can make it go up and down and all around. But she's doing a great job up at Lyon College, so if you get an opportunity, get up there and watch her play. St. Louis Cardinals, they're going to be chasing somebody. I think everybody's going to be chasing the Houston Astros. They, uh, they've gotten a lot better. The Cardinals think they've gotten a lot better. They uh, signed a couple of new pitchers, gotten rid of some guys, you know, each and every year that uh, uh, in Major League Baseball, just like it is in any type of baseball, any professional baseball, uh, it's going to change from year to year. The roster rolls over. It doesn't matter what level that you're playing in. It always happens. But I'm looking forward to the Cardinals, hopefully with the new additions that they have, that they can have a great year. Arkansas Razorback Baseball, they are on fire. They are hot. It is an inferno. No doubt about that. Everybody follows the Razorbacks. I'm a big University of Arkansas at Monticello fan. And folks, let me tell you about uh, uh, where Grant Black graduated from last year. They are 9-0 in conference. The first three conference games of the year, they scored 30 runs. The next three games, they scored 43 runs. The next three games, they scored 45 runs. You talking about Inferno, the University of Arkansas at Monticello, they are on fire. If you get a chance, you can go to their website. You can click on one of their games, check on their schedule. You can watch, uh, watch the ball game, or you can watch the live stats. They've got a heck of a baseball team, a baseball team that I think could very well compete for a national championship at the Division II level. That's about all the time we have for sports. We want to thank Kenny Thaxton for bringing us the program to you. Uh, the Bank of England Mortgage Company, member of FDIC, an equal housing lender. If you need a loan on a home, Kenny Thaxton is the man to see. You want to refinance your home, your current home, maybe get a little lower mortgage rate, a little lower interest, lower payment, give Kenny a try. Give him a call at 870-495-3931. Kenny Thaxton at the Bank of England Mortgage Company. For Bud Black on Sports, I'm David Black. Until next time, so long, everybody. Great pleasure to get to visit with uh, new doctors, White River Medical Center and WRMC the Newport Complex, Dr. Bennett Rudorfer. Rudorfer, you got it. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? Cardiologist. We'll talk a little bit about that. But first of all, interesting gentleman here. Uh, came a long way to get to Baseball, Arkansas. Tell us a little bit about training, where you grew up, and uh, tell us a little bit about you, sir. Well, I'm uh, kind of a medical brat. I was born in Chicago. My dad was in medical school. We lived in Detroit for one year where he was in training, and then we were in New York City. Um, 
I went to college in Cambridge, Massachusetts, yes, and I'm sir. a chemical engineer, MIT. And then I went to medical school at New York University Medical Center. Uh, and then I did my training uh, again in New York. And after that, I came down to Memphis. And I've been in Memphis and West Memphis for 25 years practicing cardiology. And just started here in Batesville uh, a couple of months ago. Wow, fantastic. Guy from up north come to the southern hospitality that we offer here. There you How's go. it been so far? Well, here in Batesville, it's been great. You know, it's a, it's, it's a little bit of a distance from my home. It's about two, I'd say about two and a half hours drive, but I have a house here in Batesville. And when I'm on call, I'm, I'm here. And, right. Uh, so it's, it's really been fine. I really, I enjoy it. It's a very nice hospital. Everybody's very pleasant to work with. You bet. Uh, up to date. Um, really haven't had a problem at all. You're going to be seeing patients. You see patients in Batesville and then I believe Heber Springs, Melbourne also, and now we're going to be seeing some patients over in Newport. Well, that's the plan. That's the plan, and uh, we'll be traveling uh, every Wednesday, and so I think we got one Wednesday a month, uh, possibly two in Newport. Good deal, good yeah. deal. Well, i got to ask you this, and then and we talked a little bit before we got on the air, and uh, talk a little bit about your family and kids and grandkids and okay. so on and so forth. Talk a little bit about your family. Well, we got six kids, me and my wife, and uh, the last Last two were twins, and my wife said if they came first, that would have been it, but they came last. <laughs> and three of them born in Midtown Manhattan, New York University Medical Center, and three of them born at the Elvis Presley Birthing Center in Memphis. And at this point at home, we're outnumbered by Southerners. Right. Uh, we also have two uh, grandkids, one of them's two and one of them's three, and uh, actually one of them is sharing the house with us right now. Is that right? Yeah, so we got a little two, a three-year-old running around the house these days. So. Well, you mentioned your dad about uh, being an, an, a doctor. Yep. Yeah, he's and, retired uh, at this yeah. point. Yeah. When did the bug hit you? When did you realize, I, I think that's what I'm going to do. I, I think I want to be a doctor too. Well, it seemed to me that it, it, it was always there, to be honest with you. you know. And, and I tried to, to go elsewhere. Like I said, my background's in engineering. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was always there. And at one point, uh, I, you know, I, I was going to go into engineering and business and... Um, you know, it just it just seemed like uh, like something I was always going to do, and I, I've been glad. You know, I, I, there's not an aspect of medicine that's not absolutely fascinating. Right. And so I, I really enjoy it. I really do. All right. In cardiology field, why that in particular? Well, uh, I had a friend that was doing cardiology, yeah. and so I kind of followed in his footsteps. You know, and uh, my dad always said that he wished he could have gone into cardiology. He was a family doctor, and he said if he had had more time training, he would have gone into it. And um, again, there's so many aspects to it that are absolutely fascinating, and there are procedures, and you can help people out, and sure. so I, I enjoy it. I really do. You know, when you talk about cardiology, and one of the things that, that, that uh, uh, I guess the common people out in the street talk about a lot, we, we talk about, you hear the words AFib, and you hear the word congestive heart failure. You treat a lot of different types of uh, disorders, diseases, but those in particular is kind of what the uh, people talk about. Tell us a little bit about AFib, and then we'll get on the uh, congestive heart failure. Sure. Well, you know, the heart, it has a pumping capacity, and it has an electrical uh, capacity which coordinates the pumping and then it's got the arteries that feed the heart muscle with blood. Okay. Um, AFib is when there's an abnormal conduction uh, in the top chambers of the heart called the atria and they're not contracting in a coordinated fashion. Okay. Uh, the biggest concerns with AFib of course is that the heart rate is going too fast and we have to control the rate and there's a risk for a stroke. Okay and so there's no question that we have to take that into consideration. Uh, there are newer techniques in addition to what we used to have for trying to convert the rhythm back to normal or mm -hmm. control it when the patient's in the abnormal rhythm, but that's a, that's a, a short synopsis. There you go. Fib. There you go. We could go on all day. Yes, sir. <laughs> Congestive heart failure, what is it? What does that mean? That's a good question uh, because there's... Uh, uh, a lot of different subcategories to congestive heart failure. And the way I talk about congestive heart failure is that the heart's like a circulator pump, like on a pool, and it's got to keep the fluid flowing around in a big circle. And if it, it can't keep pumping, then not only do you not have forward flow of blood to all your organs, but you get back up behind the pump because it's like when there's an obstruction on the bridge over the Mississippi River. You get congestion behind okay. it. Okay. That's what congestive heart failure means. So there's really two, two components to heart failure. There's poor forward flow, and then there's congestion behind the heart. 
Right. And so uh, we could go further. There's a right and a left side to the heart. Right. So you can have right-sided congestive heart failure and left-sided congestive heart failure. And then there's further types of uh, congestive heart failure. We have heart failure with preserved ejection fraction, where the heart is still strong. And then there's heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. So there's a, there's a whole lot. We could go on all day. Well, we sit in a library with many books right here, and then uh, 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 that's what you learn. That's what you've trained in. That that is your expertise. And I mean, there are other things that you do also. But uh, uh, you know, the plan is to be in Newport. Uh, you know, at least once or you know twice a month at mm -hmm. uh, WRMC Medical Complex in Newport. And uh, uh, what a facility that they have. Uh, Very nice. Uh, yes, Very uh, nice. the White River Health System has really put together a nice place. Took an empty building and made it into a real, real nice place. Yeah, and, and, uh, I, you know that's. That's a fantastic idea. Yes, it sir, really it is. is. Yes, sir, it is. My pleasure to get to meet you, sir. I know Thank that uh, I know that visited with you beforehand and visited with you during the interview that uh, uh, you're just one of those guys who fit right in in the southern country of, you know, Arkansas, Mississippi, and, I've and been Tennessee. I've in Arkansas 25 years, yes, sir. you know, so Batesville is not that far from West Memphis. It's in oh, Texas, southern boy. Two hours on the nose. <laughs> southern so. boy, for All sure. Right. Do Dr. Rudifer at uh, WRMC Medical Complex will be in Newport, and my pleasure to get to visit with you, sir. Thank you. My pleasure. John Chadwell, Newport Economic Development Commission, Newport, Arkansas. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. And I say see you, you know. Uh, you're struggling. <laughs> I'm struggling a little, but I can see you. I can see you. We're going to talk a little bit today about medical marijuana, kind of the buzzword around the community and around northeast Arkansas, mm -hmm. around the state of Arkansas. And uh, we have news we want to pass along and information that we need to give everybody. Let's talk medical sure. marijuana. Well, uh, the, the committee... <clears throat> The medical, Arkansas Medical Marijuana Committee uh, released their five applicants that uh, received a license. One of those licenses will be in Jackson County for sure. It's a company called uh, Delta Medical Cannabis Company. Okay. Um, and so they'll be building a facility here in Jackson County out near the air base right. in, in the very near future. Um, and they'll employ a number of folks and uh, all of these have projected to pay fairly good wages um, and as the industry grows of course they're going to grow as well so um, a lot of people don't understand that all of the marijuana is going to be grown indoors right you know right. you're not going to drive by and see a big field of marijuana <laughs> waving it's going to fact from anybody driving by it's going to look just like any other any other company sure um, and so uh, the the principal owners for the company are out of Jonesboro so they're relatively close to home and uh, we're excited about having them in the community and the jobs and the, the payroll and all that. There'll be some spin-off jobs that'll come out of it. Right. Because there'll be companies that have to uh, do transportation. There'll be companies that have to do security. You know, all of uh, supply, different supplies to the industry that they can't get right now. So there are going to be all these other jobs that come off of having that industry in town. Uh, there was a second uh, licensee that was awarded actually two in the top sure, five but right. they're only allowed to have one right so they've got to pick whether they want to be in jefferson county which is the pine bluff area or the where they want to be in jackson county in newport um as you're watching this we have we have made a pitch for them to choose jackson sure. county obviously um and we will we are awaiting their decision right uh, anxiously but it'd be nice to have both facilities in jackson county uh they may end up in Jefferson County, and then Jefferson County would have two. But there'll be one or two in Jackson County, one or two in Jefferson County. There'll be one in uh, Carroll County and one in Woodruff County. Okay. Uh, so Northeast Arkansas is pretty well represented in the industry. The, uh, as you look at the industry as a whole, people will not be able to buy from these facilities. These are the facilities simply where the cultivation will happen. Okay. And then it'll be sold to dispensaries that will sell the product at different locations. Okay. So, uh, and one thing <coughs> to note, the uh, the Newport Economic Development Commission did not put any money right. into marijuana projects. Right. No incentives, no kind of money from the NEDC. Uh, for a couple reasons. One, uh, we knew that, that even though it passed in Jackson County, there were a number of people there's you know that voted against it sure and those people pay sales tax and they feel pretty strong some of them morally against uh, medical marijuana mm -hmm. and so we didn't want to take the money from somebody who is opposed to it and and then turn around and spend it on 
on helping that right. come in. Right. Um, and so we we did not put any money in. That was the first reason. The second reason was we apply for federal grants for a lot of our projects. And since marijuana, even medical marijuana, is still federally illegal, right? It uh, it allows uh, it, it might jeopardize our opportunity to get a grant if we put money into it and then applied for a grant from the feds down the down the road. They might say, "Hey, you didn't, you know, you you you, you did this illegal activity, and we're not gonna we're not gonna fund the grant." Well, there's no doubt that uh, a, a lot of people were interested, and there were a lot of applications, and and it was a, must have been a process that was a pretty grueling process to be able to screen all these people and the applicants who wanted to quote grow the marijuana and those that wanted to dispense the marijuana. But uh, no doubt, it's an industry that's going to be a, a a high dollar. It's going to be a high dollar industry, and it's going to employ some folks. It's going to pay good wages. It is, and there's, there are five commissioners on the Arkansas Medical Marijuana Commission. Right now, they've only graded the growers. Right. And each, each of the five took all the applications by themselves, scored them all on a 1 to 100 score. Uh, and so they went through all the applications and gave it a score, 98, 95, 93. And then they, they submitted their applications back to the staff. The staff then collated everybody's application. So the maximum was 100. For each commissioner, there's five commissioners, so it's 500 points right. is what they can get. And so even the even the commissioners themselves did not know what the score, who won, until okay. they got to their right. meeting right. Uh, on Tuesday afternoon. And so they tried they tried uh, very diligently to be um, as fair as they knew how to be. The uh, the one for the dispensaries um, that process is going to happen over the next couple of months and hopefully by maybe the end of May they'll be uh, giving the dispensary licenses out just like they did the uh, cultivation license. Well, it's, it's money that these folks have to invest and they, they've got people that uh, uh, have, have come to the forefront and said, look, we're willing to invest this money and, and I mean, it's, it's a business. It is a business and it is a business that can employ people and, and like you say, from a, from a moral standpoint, some people may be against what is, what is happening, but uh, uh, you, gotta, you gotta learn, you gotta grow as such mm -hmm. as a community and uh, 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 things like this are, are, are I mean, factories of any kind are good, mm -hmm. you know, and, and you certainly don't want to step on anybody's toes, but it's just what, it's what the future is. Well, you know, there are businesses that each of us may be morally opposed to. Sure. You know, there, sure. there are things that are legal that you may be morally opposed to. The, the way that, that I personally take action is I don't patronize those places that I'm morally opposed sure, to. You sure. know, I don't give them my- You have a choice. I, I don't give them my money. Yeah, you have a you choice. Know, so I don't go in and buy anything in places I'm morally opposed to, but I don't begrudge their opportunity to operate if they're a legal business, because they are a legal business. And another part of this is those organizations, while they're gonna provide a lot of benefit in jobs, they're gonna provide benefit in bringing ancillary businesses into our community, they also are required to donate a significant percentage of mm -hmm. their profits to charities in their region. Right, right. And so they are required to take some of their net profits and turn around and donate a good percentage of that back into the community. So there are gonna be nonprofit groups in the community that are able to benefit off of their donations. And some of those, they get extra points if those nonprofits do drug rehab or drug treatment sure. programs. Sure, wow, yeah, good deal. Talk a little bit about time frame. Do we know about time frame yet? They'll be building, some of them may build, they'll, they'll probably start building, I would think, in the very near future. Okay. Um, so whatever the construction phase is, say six months, three months, whatever their construction phase is, and then once they get the building built, they'll start growing marijuana, and that's about a 60 to 90 day process before okay. uh, they're ready to harvest it. So we could be looking conceivably late this year, early next year, okay. uh, when they'll be able it's to- Right around the corner then. It. It's right not far. The not far. John Chadwell, I appreciate you taking time to join us and talk about the medical marijuana issue. And uh, uh, of course, it's all over the news, and it is a, it is a newsworthy item. And, and, and we're excited about uh, we're excited about being in Jackson County and continuing to grow. We are. John Chadwell, NEDC. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Let's continue on with more of our show.
Health. We're at the gift department, and we have uh, two young ladies that's going to talk a little bit about the auxiliary from Unity Health. Miss Marguerite on the end. This is Miss Vicky right here. And ladies, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to talk about auxiliary, and people want to know what is the auxiliary? What do we do? What are the projects that we do? Tell us a little bit about our organization. Okay, in our auxiliary, we have 17 members. And part of what we do is that we go to the floor and, and we have a cart and we take it around and if the patients need, we have water, juice, and okay. some snacks. And we see if they want any of those. And if not, we see if they need a magazine or, or a puzzle book or if there's anything else that we can do to help them with while we're on the floor. And then another thing that the auxiliary does, we uh, we do several fundraisers a year, and uh, in these fundraisers, we make money for the foundation, okay. and in order, the foundation uses the money to buy equipment for here at the hospital right. in whatever department that it might need. We also uh, do scholarships, make money for the scholarships, right. and if you're going into the medical field, and you have a high enough grade point, you can apply for these scholarships and okay. get one. Okay. And we also do a community project. And this year we have chosen the Jackson County New Life Center, and each month we do a project for them. And this past month we did a Valentine party for okay. them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we chose a king and a queen. Is that and, right? Oh, you talked oh, about it. Oh, it was a good, good time. time. I bet. had a good time. Listen. We made her a bouquet. She brought that bouquet to the um, other part, Valentine's party that they had. Right, to, right. Just had a wonderful time. We played a lot of games, but yes. they really enjoyed it. I bet you did. I bet yeah. you did. So this next month, we're going to have a St. Patrick's Day thing okay. on, on the 16th. All right. At 10 o'clock in the morning. So. Everybody over 60 is invited, right? Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, come and, on. And, and that will be at the center? Where will that yes, be? At the center? it'll be at the center, okay. yes. Good deal, good so, deal. That's some of what's going on at the... Well, you, you ladies stay busy, and the all gentlemen, you talk about the members, volunteer organization. Yes, You yes. You come here and you spend your time. Miss Marguerite, talk a little bit about being on the floor and what all that brings and what all you do, because I know to, to you ladies do this job out of the goodness of your heart, and it keeps you involved. But talk a little That's bit right. about being on the floor with the, with the yeah, patients. We are, uh, our ladies, most of them, been here for quite a few years, and we get uh, get to help and give back for the community, and we love it because we get to see patients. Not everybody. We get a list for the patients we can see. Some of them have uh, infectious disease. We don't go in that room, right. but uh, we get the list, and we can get give them some ice and help them whatever they need. Sometimes we open the shade so they can see the sunshine and just cheer them up and talk to them a little bit. Sure. And so they enjoy that. And well, another big thing is that you ladies run the gift shop, which in, we have an expanded gift shop. It's a lot bigger, a lot, lot more room now. Sure and, and you know, you talk about this program, this program's been here for a long, long time because I've interviewed at three different places. Yes, <laughs> you know? yes. And we're moving up. We just keep moving on. <laughs> we're, we're getting moving. close to the door. Tell us a little bit about the gift shop. Okay, the gift shop, they named it the Tickle Pink Boutique. Okay. Boutique. So we've come up in the world. We're not <laughs> yeah. a gift shop, That's we're a boutique. That's right, boutique shop, yes. Okay, we feature the Aromatique uh, products, potpourri and candles. And we also have the Earth Lux, which is uh, lotion, soap, candles, toothpaste, I mean, you can eat, and, and it's the coconut flavor, so you can use it to brush your teeth. You right. can do about anything. <laughs> gotcha. And then we also have the Hydro Aromatherapy Shower Burst right over here, okay. which are very good and people like. So, and we'd the tea, like... The tea, did you mention oh, the yeah, tea? Oh, yeah, we've got, for tea's sake, and we've got the skinny tea, if you want <laughs> to get shapely. Oh, that's me. That's yeah, me yeah, for sure. And, and if you want to shape, or we've... We've got several different fragrances. We've got mint, and uh, we've got the green tea, so and mango tea. So just any kind that you want. Make you dance, make you happy. There you go. So if you want to, come join the volunteers. It's very rewarding to give back 
to our community and make new friends. What do you have to do to volunteer? What do you, who do you have to see and what do you have well, to do? I'm, you can come see me or Margaret Goodman. Okay. I'm the president, so we'd be happy to have you join our organization because we have lots of fun and we do uh, community projects and then we have a, a field day where we get to go out and do something fun, so, you know. And we always need volunteers. We always need volunteers. Well, if, if lend a helping hand, we'd be glad for you to join us. Yeah, we ask for you to join us if uh, if you're looking for something to uh, give back to the community, like y'all mentioned, and uh, uh, something that would uh, warm your heart as you give. There's no doubt this is a great organization. The auxiliary's been here a, a long, long time. Yes, been here yes. a long, long time, and you ladies do a marvelous job. And we thank you for your service. You know, within the community. Anything else we need to cover? Yeah, well. Our motto is birds of a feather work wonders together. That is fantastic. <laughs> so That's fantastic. You think about that. We're uh, all little birds working together that is for right. the good of the community. That is right. Come visit us here at the boutique. Yeah, yes, right. That's right. At That's the, the boutique. And we'll open from nine to four, four. every nine day to four. except Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. So if you're in the uh, hospital. hospital for any reason and you see the ladies dressed in these uh, this particular color has been our color for many, many years. Yes, and when you has. see the ladies in pink is what we used to yeah, say. The pink ladies. The pink ladies are coming. You know yeah. that it is a great organization. Yeah. Thank y'all so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank Unity you. Health and with the auxiliary, and these are the ladies that make it go. Yeah. This is Mr. Tommy Bain. He is my friend. He is my good friend. And he's also the man in charge of Farmer's Tire Mart, Malcolm Avenue in Newport, 1501 Malcolm Avenue. Mr. Bain, how are you, sir? Great. Everything good today? See that? I see that. I'm sure the folks can see that. And they see me wearing these. Yeah. It's bright out here today. Sunshine after what? After a bunch of water? Yeah. Did it rain at your house? It did. Did it rain around your house? All over. Did it rain around the business? <laughs> did it, did sure it, enough did. Did it quit today? <laughs> so far. Yes, That's enough yes and no questions. <laughs> we want to sell some tires. Folks, if you're not in the market for tires, someday you're going to be in the market for tires, and that's why we're here on the television to talk to you about tires and service and so on and so forth. Before we get to the tires, Springtime, it's right around the corner. Lots of folks are going on spring break. Be a great time to check out that vehicle through the shop right here, wouldn't it, Mr. Payne? Absolutely. That's, that's this time of the year. It's, when you see the sun shining and warm like this, you know it's time to get that car checked out because you know you're going to be traveling this summer. When people travel, what all do they need to check on before they go on a long trip? They check tires, brakes, uh, engine fluids, right. oil and transmission fluids, and uh, uh, all those things that's, that's pertinent to making that vehicle go. You bet, make it go right. Yeah, One thing we don't want you to do is get down there on the road somewhere and uh, get out of town there a couple hundred miles and something goes wrong and then uh, somebody pulls you into the shop there and they go, uh, well, what normally would have been a real inexpensive job to use some pre-maintenance up there in Newport, Arkansas, I'm gonna charge you about $500 to get it done here, yo, yeah. Arky. Yeah. <laughs> well, you take care of your car now. I've heard that story before, you know. Yeah, it happens, doesn't it? Yes, preventative maintenance. Folks, that's the, that's the key to the longevity of a car, is providing that maintenance, maintenance where it's, when, it's, uh, uh, when it's time to do it. Don't, uh, don't wait till after it breaks down and then decide to get preventative maintenance because <laughs> you, that's, you've that's, done, you're too late. <laughs> that's repair time. That's repair time. And you can prevent a lot of those repairs from happening by just by doing that, by having us check it out, bring it in the shop, let us make sure that you got plenty of oil, let us make sure your tire pressure is good. And that's something we talk about sometimes from time to time, tire pressure in an automobile and how it affects the performance, not only one, fuel mileage, how uh, the wear and the tear, just checking the air in your tires. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and a lot of people don't realize the importance of air pressure and the, the correct air pressure in a tire. It uh, it makes the tires get more mileage and and ride better, better traction. Sure. And and, uh, and, and I know the old story about the on the hot highway the the. 
the temperature builds up in those tires and the, and the pressure increases. Those tires are made for that. Right, absolutely they are. And, and, uh, and it happens. But uh, uh, they won't build up enough to, to give you any problems. It, uh, uh, if you got the correct pressure in them when you start out, then it's gonna fluctuate up and down and it's, and it's gonna be correct when you end the trip. There you go. So if the tires, get the tires checked. Uh, if their if their tread is in good shape, we check the air pressure and uh, see the wear the wear pattern on the tires. It tell you tell you where it needs to be aligned or just rotated. Right. Uh, but but uh, we provide all those things here, and and it doesn't uh, it doesn't cost you anything to get that done to get that check done. It, it's uh, it's part of our it's part of us. Absolutely it is. And, and uh, so we, we can do that for you. Check all these other things, uh, the, the antifreeze, uh, yep, keeps your engine cool. And, and, uh, and uh, a good oil, uh, a fresh oil change before you start out on the road. It's, sure. It's, it's always a good policy. Uh, even if you're getting close just getting close to an oil change. If you're going Time to, to do it if you're gonna go. If you're gonna hit the road, you need to get the oil changed. Get you know, fresh I was gonna, gonna ask you this, Tommy, something that we, if we're just looking at a, a vehicle, if we look at it from the side, especially on the tires, you can't really see the insides of the tire, the wear and the tear, but when you put it on the rack, you guys can look right there and go, I mean, you're expert at it anyway, I mean, y'all can tell. Normally we can't tell whether or not one's wearing, but but if you put it on the rack, you certainly can. You just do that, and, it, and it's just like you said, if they need to be rotated, we rotate. If it needs a front end alignment, we'll do a front end alignment. And uh, most of us generally need to have our brakes inspected because most of the time before we get our brakes inspected, it's normally too late. We say, boy, I got a brake problem. <laughs> I hear a noise. I hear a noise in there. <laughs> Absolutely. What's that noise cause from when they hear that? What is that? Yeah. Where's that noise coming from? Yeah, where is that no metal on metal and you go. Brakes. Brakes make a noise when they uh, when they get too far worn down. Right. And uh, that's something to be expected. But a regular checkup. Sure. A regular checkup. Can uh, can let you know that there's there's gonna be problems ahead if you don't get it taken care of. You guys sell a bunch of tires. We sell tires from, uh, I mean, realistically, you know, ATV tires, uh, all the way up to big tractor tires. I mean, huge tires, but, uh, uh, you know, most of us are uh, have an automobile, and we want you to give us an opportunity. If you think you need a set of tires or are going to need a set of, power, set of tires, come by and let us give you a price on a set of tires. Sure. We, we, we think we're competitive. We think we're going to take care of you. We think we're going to be pretty good uh, from a price standpoint. And uh, uh, here's the deal. We don't stock every tire that's made for every car. But it doesn't take as long to get it, does it? No. Most time, overnight. Get them overnight. Yes. Get some tires in here overnight. Mm -hmm. Great brands of tires, you guys, not just, I mean, it, it's not just a, a, a one type tire. You have several brands. Talk about a few of your brands. Uh, we handle our primary tire, be a Firestone tire, right. and and, uh, and we and we sell a lot of Goodyear. We sure. sell some Michelin, and right. we sell some some um, uh, Toyo, and, and uh, yeah, truck tires, Yokohama, and, and, yeah, and uh, different uh, different brands of, of uh, passenger light truck tires, and and also over the road trucks. Right, right. Uh, the big 22.5s and 24.5s. We, uh, we sell a lot of those. And, and uh, so, but we can sell, we can get you uh, about any brand. Uh, that, that you need a tire, we'll try our best to get it. Absolutely. We're gonna get you a tire. Absolutely. You need one or two or four or eight or 12. We talk about those big trucks, they use more than four, don't they? Sometimes Absolutely. they <laughs> and, and those big rigs say they 18. Is that right? 18 of those boogers. And, and uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, sometimes it's a challenge, but we love a challenge. Absolutely. Been here a long time, haven't we? Been How long have we been doing this? 26 years. 26 years. Mm -hmm. We're 15 on one Malcolm, and what is it up you always say about where we are? It's where, where, where the rubber meets the road. It does that right here at Farmer's Tire Mart. And folks, again, Tommy and Linda Bain, family owned business. 
been doing it a long time, taking care of folks just like me and just like you. We, I, I just, I can't ask you enough. If you need a new set of tires, give this guy a chance because once you buy one set from him, you'll be buying every set that you've ever bought for the rest of your life from this man right here. Mr. Just, Tommy Bain. And just keep in mind that when you buy tires from me, that every 6,000 miles, if you'll bring it in, we'll rotate them for you free. No charge. No charge. Isn't that something? Just buy from him, no charge every 6,000 miles. Where the rubber meets the road, Tommy Bain, my friend, as always, good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Bradley George is at Jackson's Funeral Home at the 1900 block of Malcolm Avenue, and it's always a pleasure to get to see you again. How you been? I've been good. Good deal. Good yeah. deal. Well, welcome back. We're going Thank to talk you. a little bit about a couple of things. And uh, uh, first of all, we were talking a bit before we got on the air. You've been here a little while. I've been here a long time. I want you to tell us how you got to Jackson's Funeral Home and tell us when it was. First of all. <laughs> oh my goodness. It was 16 years ago. Wow. And I had been working from home and I didn't want to do that anymore. I decided I wanted a job. So I drove through town with my resume in my car, dressed, thinking I want to work somewhere local. I want to use the degree I paid a lot of money for. And where am I going to work? So I drove through town. I drove past the funeral home and I our entire family has come through Jackson. Sure. And I thought, with a psychology degree, that would be a really good place to work. So I stopped here. I dropped my resume off at the front desk with Miss Mavis Rhodes. And I left, I drove through town again and thought, there's nowhere else I wanna work. I'm heading home. Jan calls me, I turned around, came in for an interview and started work the next day. That's unreal. And I've been here it? ever since. That's unreal. Yeah. 16 years ago, been a good 16 years for it you. Has. Tell me, in the beginning, what you were doing and kind of kind of talk a little bit about how the job has evolved into where you are today. When I started, I was mostly doing secretarial type work uh -huh. because that, that was what they needed at that time. Um, a year or so into that, I became an, a funeral director's apprentice. Okay. Because I decided I wanted to be licensed as a funeral director and to be able to actually help families on this end. So um, I did that, and then we started our family service program, mm -hmm. and I became a, the family service counselor. And I work with the families and do the obituaries and take care of odds and ends, whatever they need help with. And of course, over the years with technology, that evolved into video tributes. Sure. And uh, the website mm -hmm. and all of these things, the collage cards and things that we do now that we did not have the capability of 16 years ago. Technology came into play, didn't it? It did. It did. It always does. Yes. So that, and, and I know now that you are a funeral director. Yes. Tell me a little bit about being a funeral director and, and, and what that allows you to do. But, but before you do that, tell me a little bit, what, how do you become a funeral director? How does that happen? What do you have to do to become a funeral director? You have to do a two-year apprenticeship okay. under a licensed funeral director with okay. a licensed funeral home. You have to, um, there are a list of things you have to do, okay. tasks that you have to perform during your two-year period. Okay. And you do case reports. At the end of your two years, you have to pass an exam given by the Arkansas State Board of Funeral Directors and Embalmers okay. to become a licensed funeral director. And then each year there's continuing education okay. to keep your, your license. So you go from driving down the road 16 years ago looking for a job to a funeral director at Jackson's Funeral Home 16 years later, 16 years later. and everything else in between, yeah. and especially from the technology end. But uh, I guess you learned it from the ground up. And, you know, I think Jan and I talked last time about, you know, her coming in, uh, you know, talking about her grandfather and her father and her learning the business. And, and uh, uh, it's a great business to be in. Most yeah. of the people that come usually stay at Jackson's Funeral That's Home. That's true. Yeah. That's true. We have very little Turnover. Little turnover at all. Yes. Uh, and, but one of the big things that you do now, and we always talk about this, is uh, the pre-arrangement. Yes. 
talk a little bit about prearrangement. I know we, we say we talk about this a lot, but we can't talk about it enough because not everybody has signed up. That's right. There's still people out there that could sign up. <laughs> That's exactly right. Prearrangement, what does it do? How does it help? Prearrangement um, gives you the opportunity to select the service and merchandise you want, you make your own wishes known, and you can prepay. And by prepaying, you lock your prices in at today's price. Okay. It removes a financial burden from your family at the time. They don't have to worry about where they're going to get the money for a service. It takes a lot of the decision making off of them. Right. And as you know, it's a highly emotional time. Yes, it is. And it's hard to make decisions. It's hard to think of a lot of the information that you need. And when you prearrange, you are, it's actually an act of love because you're taking that burden on yourself. Right. You know this information. You know what you want. Sure. And there's no guessing game. So I think it helps your family financially. It helps your family emotionally. I, I just think it's a really good thing to do. We have been, I've been on both sides of that. Yes. And uh, with and, or, or without and then with, and then with is just a lot better. And uh, so many decisions when, when I say when you come in, you sit down at the table, which is yes. this table right here. So many things that, and most everybody have, they have gone through this. The questions from flowers on top of the, the casket to songs that need to be to mm -hmm. uh, picking pallbearers. I mean, there's yes. just so many questions that you go, you know, I just didn't know I had to answer that or didn't know I had to come up with some answers right. for that. And, and uh, where you want the obituary to go. And it's just lots of things that you that What you do know. you want people to know about Absolutely. you? Absolutely. You know? Yeah. And the question that stumps a lot of people is where was mom or dad, where were they born? Right, right, yeah. Uh, and I'm always surprised because that is the one question that always kind of, and a lot of people were born at home at one time. Sure, yeah, there you so go. So you can't just say, Harris Hospital. Right, right, you know? yeah, I know, I know. But, 16 years, I guess it's been a pretty good run for you, huh? It's been a good run. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm hoping 16 more. Psychology major. I didn't know that. Yes. I did not know that. I graduated Sigmund from Freud. Yeah. Oh, don't <laughs> I just started. remember that name. <laughs> that's I it? Don't, that's all probably so you took Psych 101. I did take Psych, yeah. Yes. I, I thought, boy, I'm not smart enough to be a psychology major. <laughs> Well, I graduated from Tuckerman High School, went to ASU in Jonesboro, right. and got my psychology degree there and went to graduate school there and uh, focused on rehabilitation counseling. Wow, good deal. And now here I, I am. I always think about people that, that, that have had extensive training, like an educational degree in psychology, and now you've got me thinking that I know she knows what I'm thinking. <laughs> She knows what she knows what I'm thinking because she's a psychology <laughs> major. <laughs> but it's a great field, very interesting field to say. Yeah, yeah, it's a good field. Well, Karen, good to see you again. You too. And uh, congratulations on your 16 years. And we'll be talking over the course of the next 16 years about how so. your 32 years have gone. That's right. Karen Rively at Jackson's Funeral Home. We appreciate her taking time to join us here on the spotlight. <laughs> We're filming in downtown Newport with Tara Salinas at Merchants and Planners Bank. We got a lot of stuff to talk about today. Uh, a lot of stuff to talk about in business. If people are in business and some some uh, real good things that you can share with us, but uh, welcome back to the program again. Uh, thanks for having me. Oh, it's good you're to be back. Qu quite welcome. And uh, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about a, a, a CD rate yeah, in particular, yeah. and then we got some general things that we like to talk about. So right. let's, let's get right after it. Okay, that sounds great. Um, yeah, no, we are going to address um, a lot of you know people at the beginning of the year, which, you know, we're, we're into it now. So if you've stuck with those New Year's resolutions, <laughs> good for you, good, good job, you. keep it up. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you're still in that process of trying to get it all together and, you know, you want to end out the year on a positive <laughs> note, um, especially financially, we've got some things sure. that can help with that. We've got a great new CD rate. Um, it's a 21 month special CD. Okay. So it is a limited time offer, um, but it's 2.018. Wow. So that's in um, observance of 2018. Wow, know? okay. But it's also really competitive. Um, there's not a lot of uh, CD specials out there that, that's gonna top that right, right. now. So 
that is, um, it's an annual percentage rate, 2.018 mm -hmm. for 21 months. Again, it's a limited time offer, but it's open to anyone. You do not have to be a Merchants and Planners Bank customer okay. to take advantage of that. Um, you can come in and, you know, we'll, we'll get you set up and get you going with it. But it's just kind of a, a way to kind of, like I said, boost you off and get sure. you going. And it's it's a good competitive rate. Well, so. if you've got some cash money that's laying around, I mean, there's no need for a delay there if you can get paid to, you know, have it. So. Oh, and tax <laughs> and it's time good is coming up. So sure. a lot of people may have a little little bit extra. extra. It's only $500 to open a okay. CD. That's our minimum. Right. So you know, it's it's a good idea to it put is. a little back, and if you can earn more on it, why wouldn't you? You're absolutely so, right. Get it out of the checking account, um, get some good money, get right, some good money for right. it. So bring it on in, and um, any office, any of our offices, um, 12 locations can help open those up for you. So stop in and see us or give us a call about that. 12 locations, and I just want to hit on that just momentarily before we go on. <laughs> I, I mean, you, you just, you think back, of course, the banking industry has changed, and, and y'all have had to change, we've had to sure, change sure. along with that, and, and uh, uh, when you're doing well and you, you open up a bank here and that does well, and you open up a bank, that means what you're doing, you're doing well and you're doing right. And we wow, think so, 12 and locations. we're proud of it, yeah, and we're, you know, we're really thankful to our customers because that has that's the reason we're able to grow sure. and expand and, and you know go into new markets is because we've got great customers that support us that are you know are loyal to us absolutely um, and we want to you know do the same for them and be there for them so and you've got a lot of stuff to talk about today when we talk about business owners and taking advantage of certain programs that mm -hmm. y'all have here that mm -hmm. uh, uh, can work for uh, whether it's a small business, large business, whatever the case may be, but tons of things that we're offering now that we need to talk about. Right. Um, especially if you are, you know, if you have already kind of started on that path to owning your own business or it's still in the initial, you know, thought phase mm -hmm. for you, um, I want you to think about merchants and planners um, as a partner for you, to you, for your small business, because we've got a lot of great services that just kind of help it all flow and put it in place. Um, you know, we're obviously, we offer SBA loans. Mm -hmm. You know, we do a variety of lending for businesses, but that's an avenue that we, um, you know, we have lenders that are skilled and know the ins and outs of that. Um, and, and can help you, you know, to see if that's the avenue for you. Mm -hmm. um, and if not, again, we have a variety of other avenues that Absolutely. will go down um, to kind of get you going and get the money. Obviously, you right. know, that's the first thing. Um, and then once you kind of get into it, and for our established business owners, we offer, we offer like a processing payment service. Okay. Simply put, it's, you know, everybody needs to take credit and debit cards now. There nice. are very few people out there that are always pay in cash or, or checks. you know, there's still people yep, that write a lot of checks, checks, but most businesses really need to take credit and debit cards if they're going to make it, if mm -hmm. they do a lot of transactions. So um, we can help you with that. We have a vendor that will come in and, and get you set up with a machine and show you how to use it and show you how, you know, your monthly um reports are going to be and, and just kind of walk you through that and make that real easy for it's you. It's a great accounting service is what definitely, it is. It's a definitely. great accounting service. Definitely. And they also, you know, they have point of sale systems as well that mm -hmm. can help you keep mm -hmm. up with your inventory right. and, you know, just keep up with your sales and, and all of that too. So. Technology abounds. <laughs> right, <laughs> Technology right. And then like I said, it's just kind of, <clears throat> you don't have to think about that. Right. It's, it's there for you. Um, we also, you know, as your financial institution, we um, can offer cash manage manager, and it's really kind of the same thing that you use for your personal uh, banking account, net teller online banking. You can mm -hmm. go online and look at your account and keep up with your, you know, sometimes business owners will have a variety of accounts. So okay. we can help right. you manage that, keep up with mm -hmm. that easily, know what's where, um, transfer things. You can set up like your payroll um, or your accounts receivables to come in and out on a regular basis. So. Um, again, streamlining it all because uh -huh. it takes a lot to own and manage your own business. So it does that. It does any that. help that, that we can give, we're glad to and we know that, you know, our business owners need that. So many different things that y'all do to, to help. I mean, you're helping every customer out there, but when you get into the business uh, end of it, I mean, just so many things that you can do that makes business easier to conduct. Right, it makes it right. a lot easier for, number one, you as a business owner, and number two, as a consumer, it makes it easier for the consumer. Well, right. We also, we offer um, a service called Business Manager, and it is 
<clears throat> it's it's kind of an, a nicer alternative to a line of credit. Right. Um, and it's just a way, especially for our startups, to free up a lot of their cash flow mm -hmm. and, and you know manage it more. Um, and any of our lenders can give you more information about that. If that's something that you're interested in, you can go online to our okay. website and, and get more information about any of this. Um, so that's an area that, that, you know, that's interesting to new, pro to, to new business managers. Um, and then we also have a brand new service mm -hmm. for all of our businesses, um, and it's called Remote Deposit Capture. Okay. And it's basically um, a way for you, if you do take a lot of checks, you know, and you have a lot of, say, you know, like a, a utility company would have a lot of, you know, mm -hmm. regular checks come in. Sure. Um, but you don't want to go to the bank every day because it's kind of a hassle and let's face it, less and less people are coming to the <laughs> bank every correct. day, that you know, because they can do everything online. So mm -hmm. why would they? Um, so this is a, an avenue for our business customers to, to, to send their transactions into us and, and do it electronically. <laughs> and right, so, you know, right. you don't have to get in the car and bring it all down here in your bank bag and put it in. Um, and like I said, we're just rolling it out. And we have a few businesses set up on it, and it's going really well, and they really like it. So that's something else to inquire about. Well, any, anytime you talk about doing something in, in, in the uh, comfort of your own home or the comfort of your own business right there in your own office and not having to drive down to the bank or whatever, it's just another way that Merchants and Planners Bank continues to uh, uh, provide great services to all of us out there, whether we're a business owner or just a, you know, a, a, normal, a normal, normal customer or client. Like I said, we want to be able to to operate under your terms and conditions. So we still have our customers that we see every day and they like to come to the bank. Sure. And they like to talk to people and that's great because we like to see them in here. You bet. Goodness knows it would get real boring if we didn't have them. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but then we also have our folks that say, hey, I don't want to get out of my pajamas and right. go to the bank. So, you know, we offer avenues for those folks as well. We understand it's, you know, We've got a variety of people and we try to serve them all. No doubt you do. And it's our hometown bank here in Newport, other locations, as you mentioned, throughout Northeast and North Central Arkansas and continuing to grow and continuing to do good things right here in Newport, Arkansas. Tara Salinas, have we covered it all? Um, not all of it, no, but all for now. All for now. We have much more coming up <laughs> on our tuned. next program. That's <laughs> right. Next program. That's but, right. Uh, hope you uh, join us and hope that the uh, business owners take advantage of some of these great products that we're offering here at Merchants Planners. Mike. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Tara Salinas at Merchants and Plants. <laughs> St. Michael's Place, Jay Cox, and we got to film on a beautiful, partly sunny day. And if we can show <laughs> the back side of where we're filming, there's a lake out there. There is a lake out We've there. We've had the rain, Jay Cox. Good yes, to see have. you. It's good to be here. Anytime good we come to, to St. Michael's Place and get to visit with you, I get to hear the positive stories about what's going on in <laughs> our little neck of the woods, and uh, we seem to be on a little growth spurt. Well, we are. We are, and the uh, first thing is when uh, I come to let you in, of course, here at St. Michael's, uh, uh, we have codes to get in and out, and I come down to let you in, and I thought, you know what, let's do this interview outside. Yes, we've, sir. We've had a lot of rain here in Jackson County. Most of y'all know this. By the time you're watching it, maybe, hopefully, we've had some sunny days, but uh, he's right. Out behind us, we've got a lot of mud and a lot of rain, but it is nice out here today. And and uh, But what is nicer is what's going on at St. Michael's is, uh, man, we are growing uh, left and right, and uh, we need staff. Got to have some staff. Got to have some people. We got to have some people. We are... Uh, we are growing. We need we need nursing. Uh, we need CNAs. Um, uh, not only that, we need administrative staff at this time. Uh, hopefully, um, hopefully uh, the right people are going to come and apply. And and uh, we're you know we're trying to be uh, particular. Uh, you know, not discounting anybody, but right. but uh, here at St. Michael's, we want the right people, and uh, we want people that that want to work in long-term care. You know, we don't we don't want people just want a paycheck. You know, they're just clocking in, clocking out, and going home. We want people that want to take care of people that can't take care of themselves. Jay, there's no doubt that uh, to get in this business, we've talked about this before, that uh, <coughs> you got to have a heart. I mean, you got to have a heart for uh, uh, the residents and with short term, long term care. And uh, you got to be a special person to work in a, in, a, in a facility like this because all this facility does is giving. I mean, we're, we're giving, we're giving back, we're taking care of folks. Right. And, uh, 
Uh, the great thing about having to add additional staff, it just means that you're doing things right. And, and we have made tremendous strides at St. Michael's Place uh, on the upswing, continue to grow, continue to get better, and that, thus we need more staff. But we need good staff. If, if folks are interested in, in, in applying for what do they have to do to, to talk to you or talk to the people that are, that are in charge of, of doing that? What do we need to do? Well, they, uh, we want you to just come apply in person, you know. Uh, uh, we want you to come out, just get out in an application. Uh, there's a good chance we'll even interview you right on the spot. Uh, you know, sometimes we're busy when you come in, but uh, but fill out an application and if, and if uh, if you have to, just leave it with us and we'll call you as soon as you know as soon as we can. But uh, we're trying to make that process fast, that turnaround process, and and get you in here. Now there is a. There, you know, there is a process of background checks and things. You know, sure. we uh, have to do a background check according to the Office of Long-Term Care on everyone that comes in here. We want to make sure they're safe and that, you know, that they're qualified to work here. But um, you know, main thing is is we want folks that want to be here. And uh, there's, I know there's some good people out there in Jackson County, and, and you don't have to live in Jackson County. We right. don't mind you driving in. Uh, if you're watching from the Batesville area or uh, Searcy area, Jonesboro area, just, you know, come on. Uh, we are known to have a, a little better pay scale than some of the other uh, nursing homes in, in this area uh, for uh, some of the positions that we have. And so uh, uh, just just come give us a try. And, and not only that, um, but our, our company is growing. Uh, we are acquiring other homes uh, in mm -hmm. the surrounding states as well. So not only is our local facility very solid, very stable, um, we, we make sure we have plenty of staff to take care of our residents, but as a company, we are continuing to grow. Uh, we're very secure, and, uh, and so we are, we're, just, we're just excited about what's going on. And, uh, and so come see us, and, and as far as your loved one taking care, of course we still offer long-term long care, short-term care, rehab, um, if you're having surgery, uh, hip surgery, hip replacement, uh, back surgery, uh, you go in the hospital three nights and you get out, if you need rehab, uh, you don't have to do rehab in Little Rock where you're driving back and right. forth to see that loved one. You don't have to do rehab in Searcy. You don't have to do rehab in Jonesboro. We have qualified uh, rehab specialists right here in Jackson County. You can do it right here in your back door. You don't have to drive back and forth, you know, and uh, so give us a shot. If you don't believe it, come tour our facility. Let us show you what we can do. Well, not only that, is, and, and we're talking to the people who are, who are watching, if you know of someone that might be interested in joining a, a, an up-and-coming company, uh, get the information to them. Tell them about St. Michael's Place. Let them know that we would like to have the opportunity to visit with them and to see what, you know, and you talk about you're in a facility that uh, uh, advancement is is a possibility for everyone. If you're sure. good, if you're good at what you do. There's chances to advance and go up the ladder and, sure. and uh, be a part of a winning combination for sure. No doubt, Jake. Exactly. Exactly. Anything else, my friend? We need to cover. You know, I, the fishing season is coming, and yeah. so we need to be getting ready for that. Well, I don't. It's coming, but it looked like to me <laughs> as I look out there, I don't think there's any fish out there. But it looks like there no. could be. <laughs> there, there could, could be. be. <laughs> We've had the water, haven't we, my We've friend? We've had the water. We, we filmed the first day of March, and, and everybody knows what we. And the rain just kept coming and kept coming and kept coming, and I don't know, 10, 12, 15 inches of rain most everywhere, but. Uh, uh, that'll make the river come up, and then when the river goes down, all those fish get in those little holes that we right, need when we go right. and get them. Look out, crappie. Yes, Jay sir. Cox is coming, my friend. Jay Cox, St. Michael's care, Place, my good friend. Cinco de Mayo coming up, no? Yeah. You know, interesting story. You know why it's called Cinco de Mayo? I have no idea why. See, Mexico is a, a, a fond lover of mayonnaise, and so much so they were having some imported from Europe. And the Titanic had like 500 metric tons of mayonnaise on it. And so when it sunk, they call it now Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Not true story. <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah. Well, I went to Corning High School, so you know my history lessons were the different. Mayo the mayo went down. Sink the mayo. The Cinco de mayo. de mayo or mayo. Yeah, yeah. I love the glasses. Well, I love the prop. Oh, what, what, what have we got here? Try. Tell us about these. Tell us about these. Oh, these are. I like them. They're 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 
I don't know. They're becoming. <laughs> we're, I, don't know, they, I don't know what they're becoming, but they're becoming something. <laughs> they're becoming a nuisance for our what, program. It's a new line we're carrying. Oh, no. Your microphone dropped. Oh. Fix your microphone. I've got, a, I've got a voice for newspaper, you know. <laughs> we try to have a professional show here. Sometimes it just doesn't work. But we do have a professional organization here, and we, it we works do. all the time. It, all the time. What do y'all do here? Eye stuff. Eyes? Y'all work eyes, on eyes? Eyes. 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 What is that? They're throwing stuff at us. There you go. Try that again. <laughs> this never gets old. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Gavin McDowell from Customized Vision Care actually pays money for this air time. Nay. <laughs> he shouldn't. <laughs> you shouldn't have to pay for this. Nay. 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 Oh. Something about work month it's, or I, what uh, is it's it? Workplace Eye Safety Month. Or yeah, what's that eye mean? Safety in the Workplace Month or some combination. That's what we of those do here all the time. Words. All we, the time. Yeah. Eye safety okay. in the workplace. How's that work? Everybody just well, be conscious of it. it? It's well. Interestingly enough, I think the reason they kind of nominate or, or designate, there's a word I'm looking for, designate this month to be so is because everybody knows, you know, put safety glasses on we're supposed to. Welders know they are supposed to put their safety right, goggles on, right. even though most of you don't. Um, this does not count as a safety <laughs> uh, step. But anyway, one overlooked part of eye safety is uh, protecting your eyes from UV rays. Okay. And uh, a lot of studies have come out in the last few years talking about how you, a lot of UV light comes off of your computer screen, your handheld uh, phones and devices and stuff like that. So, okay, yeah. So, We've really stressed anti-reflectant coating and AR coating and glare coatings uh, on glasses for many, many years, and simply because I know for a fact it makes your vision more crisp and clear sure. and comfortable. But now, th now there's an added benefit. We're protecting uh, the eyes with UV from UV radiation through the use of these coatings uh, on lenses. And there are actually some that are very specific to where we are uh, targeting the blue end of the spectrum, right, which is on right, the right. You know, UV, ultraviolet, violets on that blue sure. end. So we can stack your glare coatings to where it filters out 100% uh, of UV rays and not have to, to drop in quality of the quality of the, of the lens material itself. Yeah, I think many years ago, I mean, you, you talked about UV rays, just sunglasses and sunglasses alone. We didn't have the devices that we had, yeah. what we have today. Everybody has a computer. Everybody. Everybody's looking at a Most computer. Most school systems are providing Chromebooks and tablets sure. to kids these days. Right. That's why, you know, with kids, even if their vision is is spot on and fantastic, I, I would say there's an argument that we need to be protecting our eyes regardless of prescription. Sure, sure. So, so in other words, whether you, whether you, if you see 2020, you need to come in. We've talked about this a lot, and it's something that we, 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 we preach on it that, you need what I call a, a, an eye health vision examination. Exactly. You, you need to check the health of your eye, not the vision in your eye. And you you uh, can be seen 2020 and still have a train wreck going on in the back of right, your eyes. Right. Now, obviously, that's not the norm. Right. I mean, not everybody who sees great is going to have problems going on, but the potential is there. Um, it, it's like this. Uh, I had a patient ask me, no just this morning, you know, how often am I supposed to come and get my eyes checked? Well, we, we recommend yearly. Sure. Simply because, you know, I can catch things on a, on a more regular basis if we're doing that, but that's what's recommended. But on the same token, how often do most people go to the dentist? You're right. scheduled every six months. Sure. You go sure. for a cleaning and checkup, blah, yeah. blah, blah. If every tooth in your head falls out, you can get false teeth. Right. And still funk, I mean, you'll have to give up corn on the cob. Is that what we're talking about? Right. <laughs> But if your eyes... If you lose both those. We ain't... You know, they make false eyes. <laughs> yeah, but, but they're they, not very functional, yeah, are they? <laughs> they're more just for uh, cosmetic things yeah, at that sir. point. They don't help you see very well, do they? No. no so, sir. you know, it, 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 you know, we want to not only assess the health of your eyes, and I'll tell patients this all the time. You know, I want you seeing clearly. I, right. you, may, you may be coming to me for no other reason than I want my new glasses prescription. Right. Which is fantastic. Sure. I will. I will... Knock that off your to-do list. My main concern is make sure your eyes remain healthy 
so you can continue wearing cool glasses in the future. Right, right. And seeing well with those cool glasses. Yeah, I and mean, sometimes things just didn't work, and, and, and we've talked about you know my situation right here. Yeah. It just, it just uh, who knows? I mean, it just sometimes it sometimes there's just things that happen within the eye that, yeah. that, that 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 you don't you have some surgery and the surgery doesn't work, and and it plainly tells you you know this may or may not do what it's supposed to do, but right. we're going to try to we're going to try to save, and and, and I'm, I'm well pleased where I where I am. I'm not where I w need to wanted, wanted to be, yeah, you know, yeah. but, but I but I'm better off than being totally blind. This is true. And uh, and I'm I'm thankful to you, and I've told you this several times on this program, and and you're the guy who, who's got me where I needed to get to, and uh, talk about being an optometrist and being a good optometrist, and then you have to send you to an ophthalmologist and an opt of this and this. And sometimes that. I have to punt. And sometimes you have to punt. Sometimes yeah. you punt. And you say, look, I think you need to see this guy. Yeah. And this if I can't fix you, trust me, I'm not going to waste your time, right? Or your your money or your insurance benefits by doing a bunch of razzle-dazzle that's not going to benefit you. Right. If right. I know I'm not the guy for you, I'm going to get you where you need to go. And I appreciate that. Sunglasses as a whole coming up. I mean, we, we yeah, I mean, y'all have a great selection of sunglasses. Yeah, we can get more of these. Actually, I have seen some that are red, white, and blue with a big mustache on it. Uh, I don't know if a goatee is an option or not. <laughs> we could probably go with a pencil thin if you're into the whole Hitler thing. Right, gotcha, know. yeah. But, uh, yeah, well, I, there's a lot of things those you are can cool. do I like those. I like those. So are these on the market, or is this just something you had back in the back room? Something I happen to have in the back room. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. <laughs> Looking for fun stuff. Yes, sir. We do it. We we have a couple of nice props. Yeah. I always have to have my little ruler here just to see how long we've been interviewing. This is my godfather mask. <laughs> Actually, this was my uh, Halloween costume. I was Sarah Jessica Parker. You were? Yeah. Anyway. I must have missed it. Yeah. yeah just right over his head. Anyway. Shoo! You missed, you missed my joke too. I said I keep this in my hand to see how long we've been interviewing. How long? How long does this interview last? Oh, you can see it anyway. I'm hurting now. You hurt anyway. Me. But we do take care of your eyes. We, we do. will give you some glasses. We will give you contacts. Contacts, glasses, sunglasses. You what if you've it. never worn contacts? What would you tell somebody? You've never worn contacts before. Somebody says, "I want to try some contacts here." Hey, I'm all for it. I mean, the great thing about contacts, you don't have to buy any contacts until we know what contacts are going to fit you. Right. I mean, I've got a, a, a large, I like to say a large selection. I've got a cherry pick selection of contact lenses. I know some of them just aren't worth your time and money. Right. Gotcha. So I've got gotcha. the ones that I know work well, patient pe feedback and from, from literature. I know, you know, the, the half dozen that are, we're going to sure. start with. Sure. One of those don't work. I'm going to go out in these outer reaches uh, of these other companies and find one that worked for right. me. But Absolutely. I tell patients all the time, you'll give up on contacts before I'll give Absolutely. up on Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna find something that'll work. Yeah, yeah. find something. I'm, work. I'm, I'm all about 20 happy. I'm not promising you 2020 in some cases. <laughs> I'm promising you 20 happy. Well, as long as we're happy, that's all. That's yeah. That's all we need. Anything else, my friend? You know what's odd? This is the most professional interview I think we've done well, in quite a while. We're getting into some of those things that are that are really important to us, and the jokes aside, and and. Uh, Sometimes we just have to tell it like it is. It customized vision care in the village yeah. mall, and even though I was using my Spanish tone of voice, I was not, you know, making fun of those people that speak that language because I can't speak it. There are some words that I, I can't can, speak. Though. Can so, you? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. If you're a Hispanic, to yeah, yeah. Come you, see the doctor that can yeah. talk it. Absolutely. You, you're probably not going to watch this this spot, but I mean. Because everything we've said to it. this point has not made any, <laughs> That's any sense. Correct. That's fine. That's correct. But, but I, you could come in if you're I'm, Hispanic, yeah. I am fluent in English and Spanish and sarcasm and sometimes profanity if I'm working on something. I've, I've seen the sarcasm. Uh, I've heard the sarcasm. Uh, I don't hear the profanity, so I know you must well, be telling you, a joke Well, you haven't been that. around when I'm building something. Oh, are you a builder? I try to be. No, you're not a builder. You're, you're, a, you're a profound, you're a profanity I'm, doer. I am a profane handyman. I know. What do you try to build? <laughs> I built some shelves back for You built them? Yeah. How'd you, you learn how to build stuff? How'd you learn how to build stuff? YouTube. That's Ben Black can... Uh, <laughs> I'm telling you, can figure out anything. How do you think I got my degree? No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I had to watch three YouTube videos and went, you did. one or two. One or two? Because before that, I was like, Batman symbol seven. You know, I was way off. <laughs> I didn't get it, did it? I was no, so off. No, I was hurt. I like you, my friend. I like you. Dr. Gavin McDowell from Customized <laughs> Vision Care. 
sometimes we have fun, sometimes we're real serious, but most of the time we have fun. Somewhere in between. <laughs> yes, yeah. in between. That's I try to be. Good to see you, my friend. You too. He's at Customized Vision Care. If you need an, op an optometrist that is funny, pretty, <laughs> what else are you? <laughs> well, I'm. No, I'm, I'm no, un don't, don't, don't. I'm uncomfortable now that you think I'm pretty. That's funny. <laughs> I like you well, my friend. <laughs> Customized Vision Care in the Newport Village Mall. Welcome to the March edition of the Farmer Supply Association Agriculture Report. I'm Randy Klopechka, agronomist with Farmer Supply Association. Well, I guess you can say the drought is over. Uh, we've talked really going back to September 1st all the way through about mid-February. Well below normal precipitation. If you look at the U.S. drought monitor, or most of our area was in a moderate drought. Some of um, the eastern part of our area may be in uh, abnormally dry, but a lot of our areas were in uh, moderate drought and uh, certainly unusual for that time of the year. But uh, things changed the beginning about February the 20th. Uh, February 20th, through about uh, March the 1st, anywhere from 10 to 12 inches, probably on average in our general area. Some areas may have got a little more, some areas a little less, but certainly 10 to 12 inches will get you out of a drought any time. So we're out of that drought right now. Even though you know we're taping 1st of March, and even though it's so wet now, we know it can dry out very quickly, especially some of these well-drained fields that you know don't hold water, start getting some windy days and some warmer days it can dry out pretty quickly so certainly uh, you know we got a lot of we're going to dry out hopefully in time enough to get a timely planting uh, in this year and and uh, planting season will be here before you know it you know we usually start uh, some corn some even some rice in some areas you know mid to late March for sure and uh, so certainly you know a chance that if we start missing rains it will be be able to get a timely planting in except for maybe in some of these uh, river bottoms and other bottoms that are going to be holding water for quite a while. Uh, with that dry fall I talked about earlier in the program, a lot of field work was done last fall. A lot of our farmers got, you know, fields leveled, bedded, whatever they needed to do to prep for this year. So, you know, we're going to be ready to plant in a lot of cases and all we're going to need is just to get a, a burn down herbicide application out there. Uh, drill into it and we're going to be ready to go. So, you know, it can be a very quick and efficient planting season this year when and if it does dry out. So, again, we're going to talk a lot today about those uh, burn down herbicide applications. You know, you go back for a long time, a glyphosate or the active ingredient Roundup has been the base herbicide uh, for many of these Roundup, for many of these uh, uh, burn down applications. In fact, it's been the base application for the vast majority of these applications. There are a few weeds uh, with that Roundup is a little bit weak on or maybe resistance has built up over the years to them. So, you know, there's going to be some cases, uh, you know, sometimes Roundup alone is good enough. A lot of times, most times you're going to need uh, some type of tank mix uh, with, a certain, with other products or maybe another herbicide choice uh, totally to, to get the burn down we want. Uh, some of the tank mix partners that we commonly use include things like 2,4-D, also First Shot and Sharpen. Those are probably three of the most common ones that we mix with the, uh, with the Roundup or glyphosate to enhance that control on some of these weaker weeds or some of these uh, you know, weeds that uh, have resistance to Roundup. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things you really need to be aware of when using these tank mixes is, is plant back intervals. You know, we can't put them out too close when we want to plant or we'll have to wait to plant. So, you know, because some of these uh, herbicides have soil activity, they would affect germination of that planted crop. So, got to be aware of these plant backs, uh, you know, if we're going to be making these applications. I want to review the plant backs on some of our common herbicides. Again, 2,4-D we talked about. Uh, there's a seven-day plant back on corn or milo, a 14-day plant back on soybeans, and a 21-day plant back on rice. And, and really, you're not supposed to start counting those days until there's been an inch of rainfall because that's when the, the breakdown really starts. First shot, it's 14 days for corn or grain sorghum, seven days for soybeans, and there's no uh, plant back. You can plant a rice immediately after a first shot application. Sharpen, there's no plant back on corn, grain sorghum, or rice. But when you get to soybeans, there's plant backs and they're, they're rate and soil type dependent. So, you know, I'm not going to try to go through those in a five to seven minute TV program, but really uh, just go to the label and realize that there could be some plant back issues uh, with soybeans following sharpen. So just follow up with your MP44 or your label on that. 
want to talk about some of these specific weed problems, maybe where Roundup or glyphosate is not real strong on, some things we can do to maybe make those applications better. Horseweed, uh, most of the horseweed or mare's tail that we have is resistant to glyphosate, so we've got to look at other options. Uh, generally, a 2,4-D and or sharpener are going to be your best materials and, uh, to use in those situations. You can mix them with glyphosate and, and pick up that and broaden that spectrum, but generally you're going to need some 2,4-D or sharpen in there to work uh, to enhance that activity on horseweed, which again, pretty much all horseweed is resistant uh, to glyphosate. There's some broadleaf weeds, winter weeds that Roundup's a little bit weak on, not, not just, you know, it has activity on them, but not maybe as strong as you would like. Those are buttercup, primrose, dock, and henbit. So we've got some, maybe some tank mixtures we want to look at there with buttercup, either 2,4-D or sharpen. With cut leaf evening primrose, generally 2,4-D is the best additive there. With curly dock, a 2,4-D or first shot. And then finally with henbit, which is very common, that's the weed with the purple flower that uh, we see so often in these situations. Uh, 2,4-D, first shot, or sharpen are all good at enhancing the activity on, on henbit. So those are some things to consider if you have those weeds in your spectrum. Another weed that uh, can be an issue is ryegrass. Seems to be more of an issue every year. Roundup is pretty weak on ryegrass in the first place, and now we've even got some cases where it's resistant to, where ryegrass is resistant to Roundup. So a couple of options there. One is uh, Select Max, or the uh, generic name. One of the generic generics is Section 3. Uh, it can be fairly good on ryegrass, although there's even starting to be some resistance, I think, especially in Mississippi in that situation. It's also a pretty slow worker, which is a, uh, a drawback there, but it, you know sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. And we need to remember, a lot of people forget that Select does have some soil activity, so there's a 30-day plant back, especially if you're planting uh, on a follow-up with rice, corn, or grain sorghum, those grass-type plants, there is that 30-day plant back to consider. So that's an option. Also, Paraquat plus one of the PS2 inhibiting herbicides. And, and we need to remember this. If we're using Paraquat, some people are disappointed in their Paraquat activity. Sometimes they get a quick burn and, and not complete control. But if you'll add one of these PS2 inhibiting herbicides and some, uh, the, we're looking at atrazine if it's corn or milo and we're looking at metribuzin if it's soybeans. I don't, we don't have very little cotton around here, but if it'd be cotton, you'd look at Dyrex. If you mix this, this with the Paraquat, it'll get that Paraquat into the plant better and it'll work better. So I always remember those additives with the Paraquat to make it work better if you're using that. And certainly when we get into pigweed season, we'll be using a lot of Paraquat. It's always going to be better to put that Metribuzin in there in front of the soybean. So again, kind of wet right now, but we're going to be making these burn down. There's already been some burn down herbicide applications made, but they're really going to pick up as it starts to dry out and the water gets off the field. So you know, hopefully we can get these done in March and get this planting season off to a good start. Uh, for more information, you can contact me through Farmer Supply Association. And this has been Randy Kulpetska with your Farmer Supply Association report for March. Well, we say from time to time we roll into some place of business. <laughs> and we, meaning Ben Black and myself, rolled into White River Area Agency on aging and got to visit with my good friend, Mr. Ted Hall, as Mr. Ted Hall literally rolled into the office to get the interview yeah, done. Absolutely. Tell us about why you are rolling into well, the office here. Super, uh, super Sunday, super, what is super, super Bowl, Bowl Sunday. Sunday. <laughs> I was in a hurry and I was going down the stairs of our house and I missed the bottom step there. And as a result, I ended up uh, at Dr. Zaney's office and got to uh, have a cast uh, on for about four weeks. So that's how I rolled in here. Got so a little I've boot got, roller. Uh, got a little scooter here. And <laughs> so they, here at the office, like I need to put a, a honk or put a horn on it. That's right. Let everybody know like you're that. coming through. Yeah. But so you're doing well. I'm doing well. And so we're all good. So anyway, we are, uh, we're, we're here at White River Area Agency on Aging. And uh, we're still doing business, whether I'm here or not. That's right, the thing about exactly. It. So, hey, uh, Dave, today we want to talk about uh, some things that uh, we're, we're not sure that everybody understands this, but it's so important that as we uh, look at seniors that we actually know where they're located. And what I'm talking about there, David, is that we seem to have a, a problem uh, in the country that we have a lot of seniors that are living totally by themselves, okay. whether they've lost their loved one or whatever the reason, but we 
uh, we're calling this isolation, which simply means that, you know, a lot of people are not paying any attention to them, and are they getting the services that, that they need and those kind of things. And that's the reason why Meals on Wheels is such an important program. And that program is designed for people that need a meal, but also indirectly it's a way in which we have somebody putting our eyes on seniors. So, and this is just not in uh, Independence County or Jackson County. This really is all over the country. So uh, we're, we're going to be trying to uh, encourage our, our churches. And I think, uh, I know here in Independence, Independence County that there is a tremendous outreach right now of whether it be seniors or whoever, if there's a need, there seems to be that kind of feeling, and I'm sure it is in Jackson County, but we just need to uh, really point this out to our, our listeners that if they know seniors, uh, then if they have a question about anything, they can they can call us here at 870-612-3000, and it may be uh, something that we can help them with. It has nothing to do with the business we have, but right. it may be that we can uh, put them in contact with people, or indeed it may be services that they could use, whether we have our aides come in their house and help them uh, with their meals or clean house and mm -hmm. some of those mm -hmm. things. But David, all this is based on how old you are, what the income is, and so when somebody calls us, we the process that works like this is that if they, we get a phone call, then we pass the information on to our case managers. Mm -hmm. And then our case managers actually go to, to the home and they actually see what's going on. Sure. And so from that point, then we can either help them with services that we provide or may them direct them to some other agency that, that can help them. So we're kind of making a big deal out of this, but isolation, just think about if you hadn't got anybody else that's taking care of you or watching over you, you know, everybody needs somebody. Absolutely, that and is. And so that, that, that's kind of our theme for today. Uh, Mr. Ted, you, you talk about that, and we've talked about this, but it's been a year or so since we, we've hit on it. There are people out there that just maybe need just some communication, just somebody yeah. to come by and say hello, just to say, just to come by and visit, just yeah. to, I mean, there's people out there that need services, but there's people out there also that just need a helping hand, Absolutely. just a visit, Absolutely. just a visit. Absolutely. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to encourage people yes. to get out. If you know someone that's uh, uh, in a nursing home, in assisted living, or even uh, at home by themselves, and, uh, yes. and and then if they need our services, we certainly want to be able to try to help them do that. But yeah. uh, it's huge though. It, it is. And then the other thing that we probably want to touch on too, uh, David, is that the fact that we have some seniors that are very confused in their medications. Right. And sometimes they may be taking medications, they go to the doctor, doctor prescribes some more medications, yep. they go back home, they take the medications they have been taking, and they take the new ones, and so, and then if you go to a hospital and they happen to change all that, it becomes very, very confusing to them. And uh, some of the, some of the, uh, the pain meds and things like that, that, uh, that, you know, they need to make sure they're taking what they need Correct. to be taking. Well, so there's a lot of danger in those areas. So that, that, that's an important thing. And then, David, the, uh, the uh, disease that's really taken over America is the dementia. Mm -hmm. And then the Alzheimer's is sort of tied into that. Sure. And uh, you know, the biggest problem that we see, not only is, is that disease, a lot of times the person that has that disease they don't really know what's going on, but the problem is the folks that's taking care of them. Right. And right. so that's where another service that we can help, the respite, where we can come in and uh, take care of maybe uh, sitting with these folks and helping them for a period of time, which will give the caregivers time to go out and take care of business or maybe just get away from the house. So we offer a lot of those kind of services here at White River Area Agency and Aging, and also we we do represent seniors, David, as far as their welfare overall. And, and that brings up to mind that uh, I'll be meeting with uh, our different uh, federal and our state uh, elect elected officials as we go into this time of we're uncertain about how some of these cuts that pr are proposed, and right now they're only proposed, so we don't get too shook up, but. There's lots of things on the chopping block that's going to definitely mm -hmm. affect seniors if we don't get to D.C. and get to our governor and to uh, make sure that they understand what some of these cuts might mean 
to the seniors of this country. So it's not, we're not panic yet, but uh, you know, a lot of times this is where a budget starts, but it's got our attention and we sure. want to make sure that we're maintaining our programs and that uh, we just ask that the federal government or whoever will just review what we do day in, day out. And I think it'll, our, well, our services will stand alone, David, and we won't have any problem about uh, maintaining our funding and also just see what kind of benefit we do for seniors of uh, in our area, our 10 county area, but really throughout the whole state of Arkansas and also serving seniors throughout the country. Mm -hmm. You know, actually, they, they've paid the price and they certainly shouldn't be, they shouldn't be cut. And so a lot of times we feel like, or I feel like, some of those, some of our folks that are older or, or lower level of poverty sometimes do not have the voice. So, you know, it's up to us to uh, try to carry that ball. That's what we try to do every day. I was sitting there thinking in my mind, and you mentioned the voice, and that's what I was going to say about you. Mr. Ted Hall at White River Area Agency on Aging, since you have come here and your whole life, you have been an advocate, you have been the voice, you have been the voice for those people and you're working for those people right sure. now and in, 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 in the funding with the government. You have to go down and visit with state legislators and, right. and national uh, leaders. Right. And, uh, uh, but that's what you do, that's what you enjoy doing. Right. Not part of your job, just something that you love yeah, to do. I do, I do, and so. Thank you for important. being the voice, you yeah. Thank yeah. you, and thank you. I th but I think it's just important that we make sure that we're working and that we are paying attention to what's going on. <laughs> Mr. Ted Hall, it's always my pleasure to get to see you. You bet. And you've gotten to my good friend, Dr. Angel, and he's got y'all fixed up yeah, on your does. ankle so there. We're, we're doing well. You're, you're ready to go, aren't <laughs> you? It. You bet. Mr. Ted Hall from White River Area Agency on Aging.